Hi, this is Dr. Mike Yuan. I had mentioned in the previous videos uh, how much of a game changer uh, that first interaction with Grandmaster Yang Shou Jung was in 1981 at the age of 24. It certainly affected my uh, Tai Chi practice, uh, how I did it myself because of all the corrections. Uh, it also um, made uh, uh, greatly deepened my uh, my search for my Chinese roots uh, so much more substance and profundity um, came from the direct experience of practicing these traditional Chinese methods at this highest level um, but then there was also the social effect it had on me and uh, it, it it did indeed affect me, uh, my development, uh, I think socially, uh, with exposure to this high level training and uh, the willingness to devote hours a day perfecting the, uh, the corrections that were given to me. Uh, it had a profound effect on my social life. Um, starting with my relationship with my classmates and teacher uh, instructors at the Tai Chi Club in Boston. Um, people knew that I was going to see Grandmaster Yang. Um, there was no idea that I would get lessons from him because I was uh, not his student, a direct student. Uh, and when I came back, I, I never uh, let on that I, that uh, I was gifted that generosity from the family. Um, but I immediately realized uh, on two accounts uh, that uh, I had to uh, shift my behavior compared to just uh, a month before and several years and a month before. And that is, um, uh, I didn't, uh, following Grandmaster Young's instructions, and also it made sense to me uh, because my interest was in building um, that skill. Uh, I, I kept it to myself, and uh, when I was at the club, I'd practice uh, in the old style deliberately. It was very, very difficult. Uh, so absorbed was I in the new sensations, which were a, f a feeling of being more right on the mark that uh, practicing the form with the group, let's say, at the end of each uh, class uh, was excruciating to do it, to go back to the other way. Uh, it's just a matter of whether it was uh, felt right or, or felt powerful or felt meaningful. But the second thing was um, that uh, it began to affect my power. And uh, I'd like to focus on that uh, right now in terms of um, to what degree and to what extent. Um, uh, at the Jin Sun Tai Chi Club, we would uh, spend a lot of time uh, with two partners in the G position, gripping both hands uh, and uh, developing the Fan Tan Li, propelling power. And uh, critical to that, and not necessarily, uh, is not necessarily known by everyone, but it has to be it takes a long, lot of time to get the habit and to really appreciate why to put the folk, the attention there when you're doing it. So um, I like to go a little deeper, uh, further into what that means here. When you're both in the G posture or when you're practicing with someone stronger than you, uh, the foremost thing you want to do is, is uh, keep your structure. And what that means is to understand that uh, when you're holding a forward stance and this pressure being applied to your uh, wrists, uh, the, where most of us are weak initially is in the wrists, elbows, shoulders, and uh, lower back, let's say. And so that if an if a, uh, uh, abrupt or, or a, a sudden force is applied or heavy force is applied to your body, that's generally where we collapse. And so the emphasis um, we had was to uh, hold that, do everything we could to hold 
the body still in its structure and then to let um, be what may. If uh, you're uprooted, you still hold that structure. If you're uprooting someone, you still hold that structure, which means you don't want to extend out. It's, it's almost impossible not to when you're, when you're uh, pressing someone away. But um, again, keep in mind the, the standard, the ideal, the one that'll, that'll reap the most benefits in terms of long-term development uh, is to see if you can be like a drum. And that is, a drum doesn't move. You, you hit the drum and you bound off, but the, you don't see the drum overextending itself. That's the, the essence of the uh, Fan Tan Li and the essence of the Qi posture. And it's interesting, just on the side, um, if, if this indeed uh, was a proprietary Yang family uh, method of training um, that uh, is done together with, with all the changes, like the Feng Qian, the, the, the soft style pushing hands and so forth, uh, it's sort of you do all the others to, to gain um, uh, change ability, uh, but this is the static push that uh, builds that that critical power. So first of all, you differentiate when when am, when am I doing soft style or, or uh, learning to adhere and follow and so forth, and when am I just building that core uh, root power in the in the system. So, um, because of the focus was so much on that, um, it actually very quickly became apparent uh, after returning uh, to the club that I was improving. And that th the idea that um, uh, your strength is growing when you're able, your upper body is just strong enough to pretty much effortlessly hold that structure. And then uh, the chi or the jing, the, the force, begins to sink down, down, down to the feet. So that when you're um, really mature, the power's down. And it has less to do with the appearance of your physical body as much as a, a I think a transmutation at the connective tissue level, um, uh, uh, where that the, you literally feel that your power is down uh, by the feet. And when I was uh, full contact uh, fighting, all these different styles. Um, uh, uh, the year before, I think, that I, I went to um, visit Grandmaster Yang, um, and I won, uh, I won that tournament and uh, did some in Taiwan when I was there. Uh, I noticed that uh, where I was superior to these other stylists uh, was in the root. So just to come in with the legs, um, has a tremendously disruptive uh, influence on the uh, even the best techniques of of uh, your opponent. So that's that's uh, how it's applied, but how it's trained is in this. Uh, what well, what I like to focus on this one particular aspect of the pushing hands. So um, uh, the the corrections and the influence of that uh, one encounter with power um, had the effect of more quickly helping me descend my, my force or my power, my chi, uh, down the body uh, to approach the legs. I was uh, 130 pounds, 5'6", um, just uh, a, a rail, muscular but, but very thin. Uh, compared to um, these uh, older uh, and more experienced in pushing hands people. But for some reason, the training overrode that. And uh, I was, uh, uh, one by one, uh, I was able to, um, I was better. My power was better to the point where um, all these uh, more seasoned people were uh, uh, they, they were not able to push me and I was able to control their center and so this was astounding because it first of all convinced me 
of what the internal, uh, what they always say in the internal classics, that it's it's not about size and strength, but it's about um, uh, internal. Uh, when you're skilled, and I want to get into this uh, about Grandmaster Young. When you're skilled, uh, this training is only a piece of it. The the uh, and let me see if I've I've said enough of this so I can switch gears here. Uh, it got to the point where over the years that even um, the teacher, uh, Jin Sun, uh, uh, couldn't manage me. And um, that, was, that was the real sign. And, but the, the uh, disruptive effect it had on my social life uh, was tremendous because um, I was violating the, um, the natural order uh, it was, it was, you know, it, this, I was disrupting the, the power structure in the club, and uh, secondly, uh, it was leading to a lot of uh, question as to uh, uh, as to uh, what technique did you learn? It was external. Uh, uh, what techniques did you learn? Are you doing? Uh, did you learn the? Um, uh, small frame and that is that why you've improved I mean uh, these are questions that came my way and I, I really didn't uh, know what to say again I wasn't that verse I was just into development and uh, wasn't privy to anything else but what I was taught so uh, as it turns out uh, and this is where I want to go with today's conversation uh, and it uh, affects, um, uh, it will affect uh, the, uh, I think, the, the greater purpose for why uh, you, uh, why these advanced corrections would be beneficial to you at any level of your training. And that is that uh, even though so much, it, it's so important, this static push to master it and to make sure that, uh, for example, uh, to understand why the uh, Yang family and the ones close to him, like um, uh, Chen Longsheng, the disciple of Li Yashen who, uh, in Chengdu, who studied, uh, was among the last to study with Yang Chengfu before he passed on. And their, their code was to practice exactly as the master did. And, we, and if you look at uh, Chen Longsheng's or Li Yashen's form on uh, YouTube, and I, I received a, a round of corrections from Chen Longsheng when I visited him there uh, in Sichuan. Uh, you'll see that they also, uh, even though it's a completely different uh, way of doing it because it was uh, Yang Chengku's latter years and he had modified it. Uh, for example, Yang, Ch uh, Yang Shoujong's form, and you can see how quickly it's done on YouTube, and roughly 15 to 17 minutes or so forth. Uh, and we heard that he had done 32 forms a day uh, when he was, uh, you know, young. And uh, at at that pace, it makes sense; like it's manageable. Uh, the most I ever got was eight a day. Of a f I just couldn't manage anything more than that. But in in um, uh, 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 Li Ashen's uh, Tai Chi Tren, again, which copied Yang Cheng Fu in his elder years, was done for 40 minutes or 50 minutes even. So we see a very gradual change, but my, my purpose for sharing all this uh, is to, uh, like I, I've said, uh, build bridges so that we could really understand uh, what uh, the, the, the uh, phenomena of the Yang family Taiji trend, but also its, its, its adaptation, its um, modifications uh, over the lifespan of uh, Yang Chengfu. Now, uh, Yang Shoujong was the Yibo Chuanren. I'm convinced of that because of his knowledge and his presence. Um, so he never wavered from that original way. Uh, living privately, a private life, uh, he had no compunction to join his father uh, and popularizing it and therefore making the method much more easy uh, to uh, grasp and to practice. Now, at this, I want to give. Uh, uh, jumping a little bit ahead, 
but I want to give um, uh, a shout out to uh, Yang Xiaojong's brother, Yang Zhendo, who just passed in China, lived into his 90s, and his grandson, I think it's Yang Jun, who's now one of the popular teachers in China. Even though uh, uh, what they got wasn't the same as Yang Xiaojong, I think Yang Zhendo was only was uh, less than 10 years old when his father died. So he had to be taught by, it's called Ke Shi, which means, Ke means like a guest, by uh, uh, people coming in to teach him um, in place of his father. Um, and, and you see that. However, um, they're so different. And um, I'll, I'll talk about my meeting with Yang Zhendor in a later video. But uh, just so you get a sense for the fact that Yang Shoujong did not waver from the original method. And we see that uh, in, in the uh, intensity, but it's also reflected in the secrecy of the power pushing method. It's reflected in um, uh, uh, him charging $70 to touch him for 30 seconds. And, uh, but again, uh, that's not all of it. Okay, so even though uh, if you want to uh, try this out and uh, make sure that uh, as both Chen Longshang and our uh, Jin Sun and Yang Shoujong keep the rear uh, knee locked out and the rear foot uh, uh, driven into the ground, it's a real strong mechanical structure that you need that you want to uh, push from. Uh, the rear knee being bent uh, lends to all the joints of the body being uh, being bent. So the, there's a there's a, a rigidity th uh, like a, that of a drum. That um, uh, unfortunately, I see a lot of people who who do that. They, they can't get out of the rigidity, or it's either you know one extreme or the other. It's either too hard or too soft. You're either whipping and and collapsing and. Uh, just grounding and the upper body swaying left and right and uh, that certainly is not um, in my opinion it's hardly even effective in our real life combat in, in uh, freestyle mixed uh, situations uh, just to hold do everything to hold your root that's more of a game but um, uh, you'd rather give your root away if your body if your protection was was uh, being compromised, and that's the whole idea. Many, many stories of all, uh, all styles of mature practitioners in the old days, where in order to defend themselves from uh, the the uh, repost of, of the master, would just be catapulted ten feet through a door, you know, away. Uh, they get, go crashing through the door and they fall, but they didn't get hit. So. Um, uh, so two points about Grandmaster Yang in this way. When I when I saw him um, moving around, but also with me and also uh, pushing with other people, that was on the second trip uh, in '83. Uh, he was fast. The live steps, the footwork was like everything. So you think you think it's enough to put energy into just holding that route. But really where uh, it came alive, the functionality came from, from this uh, massive repelling power, was in the footwork. So light, but also so varied uh, and quick uh, is, is how we train. And if you look at the form, and we'll go, can't wait to uh, start sharing corrections on um, uh, Grandmaster Yang's form. One of the most outstanding things you see compared to any other Taiji uh, demonstration, uh, old or new, is how quick the kicks are. They are lightning. And so even into his 70s, uh, that didn't stop. So that, what that means is that the preparation, the uh, flexibility training, the, the relaxing relaxation is uh, preeminent in the, uh, in the uh, training. So um, the impression that left me. And I remember, this is all in hindsight. At that time, I was just so absorbed in the making the adjustments that uh, they had given me. 
uh, from my previous, and I had to hide it, and it was not comfortable. Uh, I couldn't speak with my, my buddies uh, openly about research as I had done, and that, that's followed me for the rest of my, uh, my life. Um, and uh, uh, had to get used to it. And so I, I think I got uh, just a tiny glimmer just from that exposure of how the youngs have to live because uh, while they, they, pra they know the uh, correct way and they practice it that way, in any public um, uh, presentation, uh, you don't hear them doing anything to criticize or to prove wrong, you know, anyone else. And as I mentioned, it has a lot to do with saving face. Uh, it's very, so very important. But also, I think politically and socially, it's, to the, it's, it's almost like an emotional intelligence that they're applying, uh, knowing that, that it's better to just stay more private and to let uh, the effects, uh, uh, the, the social influence of Yang Cheng Fu's uh, generosity as he changed the form and made it easier. Uh, 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 and just getting back to uh, Yang Zhendor and Yang Jun, uh, I think there's different levels, kinds of greatness and different kinds of uh, contribution to the family. Where, whereas Yang Shouzhong had the Kung Fu, Kung, Kung Fu. he had the, the original uh, skill, uh, which made it famous. Uh, Yang Zhendor and his grandson uh, have done superb job. And I'd say even Fu Zhongwen's uh, grandson, is it? Uh, they're doing great work in continuing to publicize the Yang family uh, tradition, even though, in my opinion, from what I'm seeing, um, uh, you know, there's that missing inquiry. Uh, but, uh, and, and we can go deeper into that later as well, if anyone's interested. So, again, it's just another sort of a Chinese logic. Uh, what's greatness? What is it to be great? What is it to be uh, a master even of a tradition well each one of these uh, family members uh, and uh, descendants have played their own part in uh, popularizing and um, uh, uh, making known the benefits of this practice so young Cheng Fu was really he was really the middleman there he he had the original that he got, and it showed in his skill and his power. He gave that to Yang Shoujong, and then uh, his more op uh, open form, the modification, which um, I believe Fu Zhongwen got, even though he was a close disciple, it doesn't appear that he, he did that static pushing, because you don't see it, and you don't see it in his the nature of his power. Yet, they are the ambassadors. And they're the ones responsible for ben for making, uh, you know, increasing uh, the, uh, the the practice base to millions and millions of people worldwide today. So back to Yang Shoujong's uh, uh, speed. It's an inner speed, an intensity. But what I believe, on hindsight, that I got, which changed my pushing relationship with everyone in the club, eventually the teacher as well, is I, I believe I acquired a ferocity. That's what it is. It's like you're not moving, but there's an inner speed. That's what, that's what the youngs develop. They develop an inner speed, a for, an inner ferocity, an ability to bring that up into, out through the hands from the feet. And um, when you're able to uproot someone and this, all experienced teachers will tell you this, it's always a matter of having greater inner speed than uh, those that you're practicing with. And, but uh, as I've tried to convey, Grandmaster Yang's inner speed was of another class, another level, uh, that had to do with more inner sophistication. And I just bitten off a tiny bit of that, but suddenly I was able to manage the balance. And, and that's what translates to 
Dong Jing and Ting Jing, understanding and listening uh, force. Uh, it's really based on the level, the base level of a repelling power that you have in your body. So you, you can apply that speed to yourself. When you're practicing, it looks the same. When you look at Yang Zhou Zhong, it still looks like Tai Chi Chen, but what he's doing with it, that's what I'd like you to focus on when you study his form and absorb it now. Uh, there's a hydraulic nature. There's clearly some inner momentum that's going on, that's moving. It's not just the outside. It's, it's beautiful in a way, but not an external. Uh, externally, uh, it's compact. It's not as flowy as most Tai Chi people. Um, I was told once that uh, I was doing the Yang form in, uh, in Asia somewhere, and someone comes up to me and says, You want to make it more beautiful. And um, years later, uh, I understood what they were saying, because then you, you get the... Uh, Lian Guan, you get the uh, continuation uh, of the movements, uh, uh, which is critical of, of the qi and so forth. But at the same time, without the inner structure, um, it, it stays on an ordinary level. And I really believe that this can benefit, um, especially at this level, of the, speak of inner speed, it can benefit anyone, especially as you're getting older, because to do relaxation on a physical level is great. It's great for stress relief to learn how to sink sink your energy and you know for example prevent high blood pressure um, and that it, it, medically uh, if you raise your hand in terms of Dao Yin which means um, that uh, that Dao is uh, your posture Yin means it 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 attracts or entices your Qi to flow there so if you raise your hands over your head it's going to attract the Qi over your head if you want to lower the blood pressure or reduce stress, uh, the hands are, are held lower. And so um, that's just medical uh, uh, application of Chinese medicine. Uh, but he had both the repelling power and the footwork. And where it came out, and this, this may also help you as you watch the form, where it came out is in the Yang way of uh, Fa Jing. The, uh, what Grandmaster Yang had, and it shows in his hand, it showed in his hands the way, the powerful, heavy hands, uh, but not like a like a twenty pound dumbbell, heaviness uh, from the whole body, uh, which which affected your whole body. Uh, at, but I think a way to illustrate how it's different is. Uh, You've heard of qin na, uh, which is uh, grappling, uh, joint lock and grappling. But the Yang family uh, did also qin da. So qin is the grasping, but da is the hitting. So uh, they, they were fully martial. When you see the techniques, uh, how he does his techniques on uh, his form, you can see that. It's not all about... It's hardly about just pushing someone off balance. We do that recreationally, you know, because you don't want to strike. But this was a martial arts. Now, I mean, how did Yang Xiaohao, Yang Jianhao, uh, Yang Luchan gain their fame? It was fighting martial artists. They made their name in the in the Wulin, in the, in the martial art world. Back then, the standards were very, very high. So uh, this may give you some insight into what they preserved, but what they held back together because you need Fan Tan Jing in order to do Qin Da. You simply can't, you lack the power in your hands unless the whole body is holding the power. And uh, John Conroy and I, I remember I was much younger, yeah, he was very kind to me because I, I at least had enough power to stand up to him. And we, at times, I remember uh, very affectionately, we'd literally uh, be aiming to put holes in each other's t-shirts. So we'd wear these old t-shirts. And then instead of uh, striking or pushing or just wrestling, we'd go for the pressure points. I did succeed in, in putting some holes in his t-shirt, but uh, and grabbing under the arm, the tricep area is very vulnerable. So we'd feel, always be weighing uh, how black and blue, you know, uh, was the mark left by the grab I just did on you. What not?
But that I hope that gives you a, a sense for, not that you should practice that yourself, but you should know that that's where it's leading. And therefore, the footwork is monumental because all you need, if you ever practice uh, grappling or wrestling with anybody, all you need is a slight adjustment of your footwork to neutralize a, 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 uh, an initiative by your partner, your opponent, to throw you or to lock you down. And that's really the, sen the nature of the sensitivity uh, that comes through when you understand force, not just about the hands, it's your whole body positioning and knowing how to move really fast and really light and you understand that uh, from the stories. I think one was, I forgot which of the young family was, um, and I don't know if it's, I have no verification for its truth. It was a rainy day and uh, one of the young masters forgot his galoshes, so he just like ran home through the rain so quickly with the chingong, the light energy, that his shoes were hardly wet. Th these are the kind of things that I, really impressed me because we, it speaks of a, a superlative uh, skill, uh, at attainment of, of themselves as a person. But what leads it is that inner speed. So what is it when you're doing your form that could, uh, could uh, engender that inner speed? That's what I'd like you to look at. T uh, use your own as a baseline. And it, if, it, it was, if it was like me, how I first started, you're really into the flow and almost blissful that you're practicing. It's so healthy for you. But um, uh, if on top of that skill that you've already developed, you can add structure, which is the inner practice. From where does this inner speed come, which is a very vital aspect to healthy aging and longevity, especially in terms of keeping your mental fit. Uh, I openly share, um, this is not the age to keep secrets, the age of information technology, but uh, I think one of the roles I can play is to help piece things together and help you organize your practice. So again, thank you so much, um, and I look forward to next time. Take care.